in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Hello everyone, dental students of University of Kufa, as well as all dental students from different universities inside or outside of Iraq. Our topic today is the Z-Spring. First, I'm going to show you a design animation for the Z-Spring, and then next, a hands-on wire bending, and then a demonstration and an animation for the activation of the spring and lastly simulation of the spring action on a wax cast this is our the spring let's highlight its part first we have the non-traumatic arm or the active arm which is the site of the force application next we have our first coil, which should be opposite to the second coil. In this demonstration, I'm going to assume it's bended in upward direction. Next, we have our second arm. And then our second coil, which should be again opposite to the first coil and thus should be downward. And then our third arm. And finally, the U-loop and the retentive tag. Now let's put it back all together to see it as a one whole unit. Now let's see it without all these distracting headlines. First we have the nut traumatic coil or the active arm, the site of the force application. The coil should be directed upward or incisally and should be always in the mesial side unless there is a distopilateral rotation. Next is our first coil which should be opposite to the second coil. In this demonstration, I'm gonna assume it's bended upwards. Then we have our second arm, and then our second coil, which again should be opposite to the first coil and thus should be downwards. Next, we have our U loop and then the retentive tag. First, we start by straightening our wire, just like the other figures. With the Adam plier, we hold it from one side and straight with our index and the thumb finger. Continue straightening our wire. You have to be a little bit delicate with it. it remember, it's a 0.5 gauge wire for the spring, so it can be a little bit distorted. Now the wire is straight, so we start do our non-traumatic coil. First, we start doing a little bit of U-loop or a small coil from the side and continue our bend. Next, after we have a U-loop with the Adam plier, we are gonna close this U-loop. This is a little bit tricky because the wire diameter is small Therefore, it can like uh, snap from the Adam plier, sorry, and you have to have a good control on it. Now it's closed, but we need a little bit more. Next, we're gonna cut the wire and then reclose our coil to make it small. Remember, guys, the non traumatic coil should be really small. Sometimes when you do with a non-traumatic coil, the wire gets placed labially or palatally, especially in uh, small diameter wires, like the 0.5 one. So we have to straighten it again. We have to make it straight. So we make it straight by holding it with the Adam plier and then pressing really hard. Press really hard to make it straight with the main wire. Just like that, you can see now the non-traumatic coil is straight with the main arm. Now our non-traumatic arm and coil is ready. Remember, the non-traumatic coil should be directed upward or incisively, and should always be on the mesial side of the tooth unless there is a distopilateral rotation. Next, I'm gonna mark the distal border of the spring by holding the non-traumatic coil and with my marker, my pen marker, I'm gonna mark the distal part or the distal side, sorry. Next, I'm gonna bend my first coil of the spring. Remember guys, the two coils should be opposite to each other. 
Therefore, in this demonstration, I'm gonna bend my first coil in upward direction. I'm holding it with the angle plier and I'm gonna bend in upward direction. Now the first coil is finished, next is the second coil. The second coil should touch the non-traumatic coil to make it passive. Therefore, we have to close the second arm and making it touch the non-traumatic coil. As you can see now, I'm holding the first coil and I'm closing the arm. Close upward and downward and now it's touch the non-traumatic coil. Next, we're gonna mark the point of the second coil which should be at the end of the non-traumatic arm then we're gonna open the second arm why we are opening because we can't do our second coil in the closing state so next we're gonna do our second coil which should be remember guys should be opposite to the first coil should be downwards so i'm gonna bend it in the downward direction this second coil is a little bit tricky to bend because you have a limited space or an area to push it or to hold it with the angle applier. So it has to be a little bit more precise and you have to know how to adjust and how to hold the angle applier. You may have noticed now that the lights are dimmed because unfortunately the electricity went out and only one of the ring flash is working on a power bank. So, welcome to Iraq, I guess. Now, both of the coils are finished, but remember guys, you have to make the second coil touch the non-traumatic coil or the non-traumatic arm to make it passive, not active. If you do it like this, this is, well, de severely decrease the range of activation. So we close it by holding the first coil and Push the second coil in the direction of the non-traumatic arm. You have to push it like upward and downwards to keep it in the same plane. You don't have, you don't want it to be displaced like upward or displaced downward. You have to push it gently, first upward and then downward, upward and downward, upwards and downward until it starts touch the non-traumatic arm. And just like that, you can see the second coil is touching the non-traumatic arm. Next, we're gonna close the third arm by again closing it upward and downward to keep it in the same plane. The third arm should also touch the first coil. So again, you have to close it in a manner that touch the first coil. You can see now the third arm is touching our first coil. Next, we're gonna mark the start of the U-loop, which would be at the end of the first coil or the border of the first coil. And with our uh, angle plier, we make a bend or a U-loop. It's better to make this U-loop as uh, narrow as possible, so you have to bend it in a way so it's parallel with the third arm. Next, from the half of the arm of the U-loop, we're gonna mark to make the start of our retentive tag. Now, from the mark that I made, I'm just gonna hold it with the atom plier and do a downward bend. See now, I'm holding with the atom plier and then a downward bend, a 90 degree bend. Now, 
Next, you're gonna hold it from the U loop with the Adam plier and do a downward bend. A bend should be toward the pallet. So downward bend, look now, it's 45 degree bend, toward the pallet. Next, while still holding it from the U loop, you do an adaptation with your uh, thumb finger. You want to adapt the tag on the pallet. So it's have a smooth curve like now. Remember, we want a smooth curve adapted, not a straight wire on the pallet. Next, we are bending our tag by holding it with the angle plier and we do small U loops. The first one is done. Next, the second one. You keep doing U loops one after another until you have like four or three U loops is enough. And then you have the downward bend or the L shape. Now the retentive tag is finished, we're gonna do our downward bend or the L shape. This is done to prevent rotation of the main wire and to provide enough space for the acrylic beneath the spring. Next, we're cutting it by holding both the set spring and the wire to be cut with our finger and cut. If it was, remember, if it was a small piece, you have to cut it under the bench because you can't hold it uh, with enough pressure or enough force to prevent it from snapping. Now, let's see it on the cast. Now, it's good, but it's not perpendicular on the tooth. Like, not perpendicular enough. So, we have to hold it again from the U-loop and do a downward bend from the U-loop here. We're gonna hold it with the Adam plier and do our downward bend. You bend the retentive tag downward. This will make the spring as a whole perpendicular on the central or lateral or the canine, whatever tooth you are pushing. Now let's hold it with our wax to allow you to see it without my hands or finger blocking it. You can see now it's perpendicular on the central incisor. It is in the same plane, lingually or palatally. The tag should be in the same side of the incisor to be pushed, not beyond the midline. Both uh, the first and the second coil should be opposite to each other and two to three millimeter in diameter. And remember, it should be parallel on the tooth. Now let's do a free view without the being in the cast or in the wax. You can see now we have two coils one not, and an untraumatic arm retentive tag and all of the coil and spring in the same plane you can see now labially it's the same plane and mesially and also distally distally also in the same plane and perpendicular on the tooth now this is a different just to bring from the one i just bended in the demonstration but i wanted to show it to you you can see now it's one of the coil this one is smaller than the other one and this is perfectly fine because both the coils are in the range of two to three millimeter. So you can have one of the coil like two millimeter and the other like a two and half or even three millimeter. But remember, it has to be in the same plane. The activation of the spring is done by opening of the coil. Usually in the first visit, we open the first coil so that the active arm are displaced about two millimeter. Let's see it again. Now this is the positive state and this is the active state. By opening the coil or by pushing or pulling, sorry, the active arm about two millimeter toward the labial self. 
Uh, this is a side-by-side -side picture of the passive and the active state of the spring. On the left side, the, the spring is in passive state. The second coil touch the active arm, while on the right side, it's in active state. Now let's do a real-time activation of the, the spring. Again, we are doing it by opening of the coil. Usually in the first visit, you only open the first coil. Alternatively, we can activate it by pulling the active arm 2 mm forward. Now, for the simulation, we're gonna put our activated the spring on a retrocline central incisor on a wax cast, and then we're gonna dip the wax cast in a hot water. This hot water will soften the wax and allow the tooth to be moved under the influence of the, the spring. Now let's dip it in the boiled water and we're gonna wait for the tooth to move. Because this is a time-consuming procedure, I'm gonna fast-forward the boring parts right into the end of the video. After roughly 20 minutes of dipping our wax cast in the hot water, now we have a tangible result. You can see that the central incisor now a little bit more proclined in relation to before. Now let's see it side by side. The left is the before and the right one is the after. The wax on the right photo is a mess because of all the heating and cooling that underwent in 20 minutes but the most important part is the action of the spring and the before photo the central incisor is on a cross bite it's retrocline while after the activation and the action of the spring it's pushed the central incisor more in a labial position and more proclined state and the central incisor is in better uh, position now of course, not an ideal position because uh, we need more activation. You can, uh, you may have noticed now that uh, there is a space between the central incisor and the nanotraumatic arm, which is the active arm. This has happened because uh, as you activate the appliance, it will push the central incisor away, labially. So when it's pushed, it's no longer touch the active arm. And actually, this space between the active arm and the central incisor is a good indicator whether the patient is wearing the appliance or not. If he's not wearing it, you, will, you won't see the space after two to three weeks. However, if he's wearing the appliance, you will see either a slight touch with the palatal side of the central incisor or a one millimeter space. And then you activate it again and closing the space and pushing the active arm more into the palatal side of the central incisor. And thus, again, the tooth will be moved more labially. And that's it for the spring. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for your time. And if you have any question or inquiry, feel free to leave a comment or PM me on my Instagram. And that's it folks. Good luck on your midterm exam and may God bless you all.